we believe that this message will be a blessing to you so I want you to stay glued and watch to the end and share to bless others this is Christocentric we have a lot of Apostle Eric Nyamiche's message on our platform kindly check them out thank you for watching stay blessed now in this young man you came to my house now he says that he's trying to write some ACCA. And and he has decided that he's going to pass all the papers. The first attempt should be eight. Now, now we see now you need to be saying so if Says he are writing thirteen papers and he he's done seven already. All of them is called. And his strategy is that uh, when he began telling me the details of how he carries himself, how he is having sleepless nights, and the times he sleep, and how he is glued to his boots, I said that that is it. Now he's working very hard today against the future. Mm. do something about your academics and do it today do something about your skills do it today do something about your marriage and do it today do something about your parenting and please do it today. Do something about your slothfulness and do it today. Do something about your anger. <laughs> Some people say that maybe I'm cooking. Wait, wait, I did the boy and once I'm running. I'm bad tempered. I mean, so what does that mean? Now, what does that mean? When the fruit of the spirit is begging to be grown and to be fruitful in you, do something about your anger and do it today about your lateness. And, and do it today. today. Do something about your character, your immoral life. And do it today. Do it today. Shall we just bow down our heads for a moment? What do you have to tackle today? What do you have to tackle today? You can't just be in this rotten marriage and not doing anything about it. See, the answer is not checking out of the marriage. If you do something about it, God will partner with you and you have success in your marriage. Life can be meaningful. That's Do something, do something, Pastor. You Let every day come and meet you doing something about your challenges. Let every day come and meet you do something about your skill. Your attitude and your character. Because this will take you into the future. Your skills, your attitude, your character. Don't be blaming your husband all the time. Don't be blaming your wife all the time. Now, you can't change people by direct action. You see, if you want people to change do the change yourself. Now, you change and they will adopt your change.
Thomas Kalele. Thomas Kalele has said this and I want to quote. Our main business is not to see what lies dimly at a distance but to do what lies clearly at hand. Our main business is not to see what lies dimly at a distance but to do what lies clearly at hand. Unquote. Do something about your situation means work at it. Work till like God, you see that it is good and it is very good. Now, little by little, work at it. And it will be good. Now, Genesis 1. Verse 12. Genesis 1, verse 12. Now the last line. And God saw that it was, it was what? It was good. Verse 18. Verse 18. It's all about creation. God saw that it was good. Verse 21. Last line. And God saw that it was good. Verse 25. Now you realize that God was still working. And God saw that it was good. Mm. 31. God saw all that he had made. And it was very good. And there was evening. And there was morning. The sixth day. And so the seventh day. He rested. So let us work on our challenges. Because God is with us. Little by little. From glory to glory. One day it will be very good. Then you can rest. In future. See life is in two halves. Jesus says as long as it is day. I must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming. And I do reba. When no one can work, even the day that God gives us, there is a part we call the day. And the part we call the night. The night is not for work. We work during the day mostly. So let us be careful. In our lifetime, there is a day part. And there is a night part. When you are around 65, if you are a pastor of the church of Pentecost, now you go on retirement. And when you go to church, you can't just tell the pastor that I want to preach. <laughs> on retirement. Uh -huh. Oh, me. Oh. <laughs> and sometimes you don't take care, you be praying, closing prayer, closing prayer for 20 years. And these things are normal. Now we know it's normal. It will happen to me to be praying, closing prayer. <laughs> so while it is there, I should be preaching all that I have to preach. So when I'm retired and I'm sitting at the back, uh, be satisfied that you did your best when you had the opportunity. Because the days of closing prayer are ahead. And benediction. You realize that oh, you have a lot to give, that there is no much space for you to give. And the upcoming generation do not even remember the old folks. Sometimes you go to church and inadvertently they introduce people and they forget you. 
It is normal. So today, when you go to church, you are forced to introduce you, they clap. Let them clap. And then be happy that they are clapping. Because <laughs> somehow they will forget you. Especially when you are not in church and your wife goes, ask for your wife, dear. <laughs> You see, for me, I prepared my mind. You say closing prayer. I will pray from my heart. <laughs> it's a big opportunity. When you say, come and give the benediction. Don't just come and say, may the Lord bless you. Close your eyes. And because for a long time you have not been preaching, you preach even in your benediction. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes people accuse old people of talking to me. What should they do? I told them you are paying for your catcher. Oh, when you need to give them the do. opportunity, <laughs> all oh, the many days that they have not been preaching, they will put it in. And when you are saying that, and maybe I want to mean Kenya, I say no. We are born in Ghana, Edeba. That is how life is. There will come a time that even such people going to church becomes a problem. Yeah, because they just cannot go to church. They are old. They are age. They have become fearful. Shall we bow down our heads again? Let us pray that we take our chances. While it is day, enjoy your marriage with the wife of your youth. Because soon we will be old folks. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Mm. Oh, Because we don't have time. We have to be careful of delays. Once you have the day, make the best out of the day. Let the day, let the sun go down the day as you look back and say that I did much. Be careful of delays and procrastination. It could make the future too heavy, too burdensome, too burdensome. Too burdensome. Procrastination is increasing tomorrow's burden. Procrastination is not freedom, it is only piling up tomorrow's troubles. Now, in Genesis 43, there's a story of Jacob and his children. You know, when they went to Egypt to buy food, because of famine, they actually told Joseph that they had brother who wasn't present with them. In fact, Joseph wanted to see his brother. 
His brother Benjamin. So he told them that if they were actually not telling lies, then when they have to come back, they have to come with their brother. And you catch that one say, say yes, we put padia and your wobba one for one yano emra. When they went back and they had to go and fetch some more food, the old man said, I'm not going to allow Benjamin to leave. So that you come and tell me another wonderful story. So Benjamin is not going, we are not going to eat. And see, O Catcher, one papa, and one papa can say, One on my one phone, you are bear man in court, and Quanqua yet to send your Yusef Diano, a yeah. But somehow, uh, it got to a time that the old man saw that if they don't go and fetch food from Egypt, maybe they would die. And so, what you are, and the cocoa do say, Yakop, who said, said one copediane, and film his room, mamma, and your one shah will be. So the old man decided that they should send the boy along and then go and fetch some food from Egypt. Let's read 43 verse 10. Now this is what Judah said. And I want us to read together. As it is, if we had not delayed, we could have gone and returned twice. Yeah. As it is, if we had not delayed, we would have gone and returned twice. Delay. Procrastination. We need to be very careful. There are certain things that are delayed and are never able to be recovered. You can ask some of the ladies, they will tell you. Some opportunities never present themselves again. They are delayed into eternity. Doesn't come back to them. Doesn't come back to them. Hmm. The Lord is with you. So do something about the situation. And let me just end by saying the Lord is with you. Mighty warrior. Jesus promised the disciples I will be with you. And he was with them. Mark 16 verse 20. Mark 16 verse 20. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere. And the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. The Lord worked with them. Now one day, we free her, we could come and say, and we are not a word a cow on the radi at the one a year, Juma, not in Saint Chirene, near one word, a sin one seven so day. Brothers and sisters, God is with us, and you are no matter for a radical, and He is prepared to work with us through our challenges. Now, why a crowd say, only a bay a Juma backing us with signs and wonders. Now, what the Amadian in Saint Chirene, sometimes you can see that you have come to your wit end. To the beer, what to me, who is that? What could do, Puano? We said, face the facts. Now, yeah, can I say, Jasem, the truth to worry. Do something about the situation. But you realize that you have done what you think you can possibly do. Things seems to be out of control. No help. Remember that God is with you. Sometimes you are caged in. And you just don't have options. You simply do not have options. One of the powerful way out of such a situation is to remember that God is with you. And go to him in prayer. Jeremiah 33 verse 1. While Jeremiah was still confined in the courtyard of the guard, the word of the Lord came to him a second time. Listen. Yes, the Bible says that he was still confined in the courtyard of the guard. So he was confined, he was protected. There's no way out for 
Jeremiah's escape. But God was with him. So the word of God came to him. You always partner with us and check, get us out of our challenges. This is what the Lord says. He who made the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it, the Lord is his name. When we say the law, we are talking about the owner of all things. The Lord is his name. Verse 3. Very important verse. And sometimes I wonder why we don't apply this verse. Call on me. And I will answer you. And listen, and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. We carry needless pain. We bear needless burden. All because we don't call on the Lord. Listen, God says, I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. Mm. Many years ago, I was asked to preach at a district meeting. It was a forum that a brother would scarcely get the opportunity to preach. So my district pastor has asked me to preach this joint service ah, and I was burdened. I was really burdened. I decided to go and visit my presiding elder who had a shop in the market, in the heart of the market. So when I went out, we were just talking about the, pro the, the program. No sooner had I left his shop than I heard somebody speaking to me. It was as if someone was preaching to me and telling me how to go about it and giving me the words, actually giving me revelations that has never entered my heart. So I didn't know what to do in the midst of the, of the day, day, day in the market. Someone was speaking and I was hearing it. So I had to go back to the, my presiding elder's job. Just go and sit down and take pen and paper and then write these things. Not me cinema, some see will be jam in chain air casa. Not or can some I can see a hint at the achreme. Now me who no quire me fast so I send a bayer, job on impo me to me a casa. And in near by an asset me to me caught near me corn in chain presiding in the hall. Now my shall see a set my fat pen, paper, matre. This is in the market. And the Johnny Moana did the honor. What of if you find space for him in your closet? Call on me. And I will answer you. And tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. See, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother named him Yabez. Saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel. He cried out to a specific God, the God of Israel. Oh, that you will bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. The Bible says that. And God granted his request. God granted his request. That is why the Bible says that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Now he was caged in. 
in pain, how many misery. He saw his situation. There was nothing he could do about it. It was like, like a destiny. It was like a destiny. It was like a destiny. And then he cried to God. The Bible says God granted his request. When people have the conviction, that God is with them. They pray. And they pray much. Prayer is bringing God into the equation. Bringing God into the equation. Let him come and work the mathematics for you. Prayer is dependent humility on God. Prayer is partnership with the Almighty in meeting needs answering questions and solving problems. Why are you here today? What has been your fear? What have you been mourning over? Come out from where you are hiding. You woman of valor. Come out. For the Lord is with you. Face the facts of your situation. Quit warring. Do something about your situation. Do it today. For God is with you. He will walk along with you. And work with you. So... It is very good. Face the facts. Quit worrying. Do something about your situation. The Lord is with you.